plant a seed and watch it grow. One dollar is all it takes to make a difference. Visit www.worshipcenterradio.net and click the banner on the right-hand side and sow a seed to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. with me lord that's what the song says and that's been my prayer all day long walk with me lord talk with me be my friend hallelujah call a neighbor call a friend call a widow and call someone who cares about widows like we do this is minister mary edwards and and we care about you you know i just want to say this this program even though it's uh um, geared primarily for widows I want you to know you don't have to be a widow to tune in and get blessed we have talked about how happy are you and everybody wants to be happy whether you're a widow or not Absolutely. everyone wants to have a friend we talk about friendship we talk about widowhood we talk about beware of scams we talk about mm-hmm. online dating so a lot of our topics are relevant, not just for widows, but for those Amen. of you out there, and not just for women. Men like to have friends, too. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Open us up in prayer, Elder. Hallelujah. I'd be delighted. And you know what? It is so good to see you. You're looking very regal tonight. Oh, am I really? Got Thank that you, my dear. Going on, you know? so <laughs> Thank you. My goal, too. That's very, absolutely. That's right. Yes, that ma'am. is right. And those colors are very significant oh, in the kingdom. Yes, they are. are. Thank you. So we just want to say good evening to everyone. We're so grateful that you tuned in today. And we're just going to go to the throne of grace. If you can just bow your heads with us. Heavenly Father, we just come before you once again in thanksgiving. We come before you in praise with our hearts lifted up before you, O oh God. Father, we thank you in the matchless and magnificent name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Father, we thank you that you have given us yet another day, that you woke us up this morning in the, our you, right Lord. minds, O mm. oh God, in with right the mind. activity of our limbs. Father, we are grateful that you kept us all over the night season, all that you kept our long. families, mm-hmm. that you kept our children as they went to and fro, Father. We thank you for these things. We don't take them lightly, no, O oh God. Take them we lightly. Thank you, Lord God, that you've given us a sh- home, a shelter, that you've given us food on our table. We thank you and praise you, O oh God, for those that have jobs and, and all of the many blessings. We will not forget your benefits towards us, O oh God. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that even for those that might be going through a difficult time of grieving, and perhaps mourning. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you said that you would bring forth comfort. And so we thank you for the comfort that you send forth in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we just give you all the praise, all the honor, that even as we're going forth on today, that there will be something that is said that will bless 
and edify though the listeners, oh God. And we give you praise. We honor you, oh God, because you've ordered our steps and you've ordered our words. We dedicate this program to you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And bless Amen. the Hallelujah. Lord. Oh Hallelujah. my soul. Hallelujah. And all that is within me, bless his, his holy name. name. Amen. Amen. Oh. oh, I'm feeling good now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be sharing with you one of my, quote, signature messages mm. uh, tonight. Uh, it, I occasionally have to go to my file and pull this out as a reminder mm -hmm. for me. All so, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm ministering to myself just like I'm ministering to you. Mm. Uh, and I call it a basket case. Now, how many mm. of you ever said, oh, my God, I, ooh, I feel like I'm a, a basket case. <laughs> but we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about go. letting go. Yes, ma'am. And how do you let go? And I, I want you to do something. I want you to get your Bibles. And oh, yeah. uh, I'm not going to read all the scripture because I'm going to be talking about Exodus chapters 1 and 2. Praise and so I don't want to take all the time to read all of the scripture. Hallelujah. But I want you to open up your Bibles. And that's real easy to find. It's in the first part of your Bible, the first <laughs> part of the book. Amen. Amen. So find Exodus. And I'm going to be referring a little bit to the chapters as we go along. Oh, also, yeah. if you happen to have a wicker basket or any kind of basket around there, I want you to get that too because I'm a visual person. Yes. And you'll soon find out why I'm asking you to get that basket. Praise but let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Have you been struggling for months, perhaps even years, with situations that have called you frustration and emotional mm. pain. Mm, let me think. I'm sure we all <laughs> have at one time or another, if we're honest. Has the pain been maybe because of a wayward child? Mm. One who's gotten off track? Mm. Or maybe you never even got on track? My maybe it's a marriage that's going from bad to worse. Jesus. Perhaps you've been afflicted in your body and you can't seem to get healed. Have you had dreams and visions that haven't yet manifested after years of waiting? Almighty God. Perhaps you're a widow and you had to let hubby go. Mm. Have you really let him go? I think something. if you have not, this is going to be especially a good message for you because we're going to talk about it, Elder Ann and I, how to let go. Praise God. There are many such frustrations that we're confronted with from time to time. And the Bible refers to these as the cares of this world, mm. Matthew 13 and 22. Praise Hope you God. got your Bibles. We're going to look at Exodus chapters 1 and 2. Amen. Not too long ago, I found myself experiencing a great deal of anxiety mm -hmm. in a particular area. Okay. And the strain on my spirit led me to fall on my face in prayer and cry out to the Lord Praise for him. some relief. Oh, yes. my God, I Hallelujah. needed some relief. Praise him. What I said was, Lord, you have instructed us to cast all of our cares on you. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 7 tells us to do that. Hallelujah. Now, no one in their right mind wants to hang on to those burdens. Amen. Amen. But how do you turn them over? That's Amen. the question. It seems so much easier to say than it is to do. Amen. Over and over, I give them to you, Lord, only to retrieve them again. You pick them back up? Pick them back up. Oh, mighty God. Being honest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, Lord, was my prayer. Show me how to let them go. Hallelujah. Now it was the Lord's turn to speak, Elder. All right. Now. And he said this, pray for the faith of Joshabed. Some people mm. say Jacobin. I call mm. her Sister Josie. Oh, right. <laughs> he called me beloved. And I knew he was talking to me because he always called me beloved. Oh, bless the Lord. Yeah, you too. He called, oh, he called you beloved too. So it depends on what I'm <laughs> be, behaving myself or now. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> the Lord went on to show me what he meant. And if you look at Exodus chapter 1, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be referring to that and then also chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Stories are told in the Bible about how significant women, many of them, 
talks Amen. to us a lot about women. There's a Amen. lot about women in the Amen. Bible. Amen, there is. But Jochebed, Josebed, Sister Josie, mm -hmm. she had a very special faith. Yes. Unique in its own way. Amen. Sister Josie had a son whose name is well known. His name is Moses. Moses. He used to be like a rock star. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Moses. That's what's Back his name. in the day. And guess what? God had a plan for Moses. Amen. But from the time he was conceived, mm -hmm. even while he was in his mother's womb, mm -hmm. the enemy was out to kill him. My God. However, in spite of the enemy's well-laid plan mm -hmm. to annihilate all the Hebrew children, mm -hmm. the great Jehovah permitted Moses to live. Hallelujah. For as long as she could, Sister Josie sheltered Moses and hid her precious son from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the day came when she realized something, that if she wanted to continue uh, to keep him alive, mm -hmm. she had to let, let him, go. him go. Oh, my God. That's so hard. Isn't on, that? Isn't it? She took a giant step of faith. Yes, she did. And placed her beloved son in a basket. Mm. Then she placed the basket on the Nile River and oh let God. it float. Mighty Wherever God. it would. Mm. And Moses floated right into the waiting arms of the enemy, <laughs> where he was subsequently raised Jesus. and groomed in safety My in God. Pharaoh's household. Isn't that something? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Man's plan was that Moses would one day succeed Pharaoh and sit on the king's throne and rule Egypt. Mm. But, 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 but. But God. God's divine plan was that Moses would be the deliverer of his oppressed people out of the clutches of the enemy, Jesus. which eventually did come to pass. Mm -hmm. Many more supernatural events occurred in the life of Moses after this. Hallelujah. What I've shared with you was just the beginning of the master's plan for his servant's life. Hallelujah. One of the points I want to make here is this. God has a wonderful and individual plan Amen. for everyone's life. Yes, he does. That plan is that we be fruitful and multiply, Genesis Hallelujah. 1, 22. Hallelujah. This is the very thing that Pharaoh was afraid of in mm -hmm. Exodus 1 and 10. He was afraid of that um, the people would be fruitful and multiplied. Oh my God. And for this reason, he implemented his evil plan to slay the Hebrew boys. Jesus. As a result, Moses' life was in jeopardy. Oh, yeah. Again, let me remind you that the adversary had a plan to kill Moses while mm -hmm. he was still in his mother's womb. Oh, my God. Why? Because he knew that Moses represented a potential threat to him. Mm. He knew that Moses oh, and the children of Israel would greatly increase in number. Mm -hmm. Now, every one of you under the sound of my voice is a similar threat to the devil. We're mm. a threat to that devil. Oh, my God. God has a plan Almighty for God. every one of us. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're born is evidence. Yes, ma'am. That our purpose is necessary. Hallelujah. We were born to lead. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. We were born to lead. Hallelujah. We were born to give that dirty devil a fit. <laughs> God has planted a seed in our natural and or our spiritual wounds that is intended to put Satan to an open shame. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why Thank he is Lord. doing everything in his limited power, limited power yes. to discourage, defeat, mm -hmm. depress, Amen. divide, and dethrone us. And now, mm -hmm. minister, yes, what we have come to understand is the battle that he wages against us mm -hmm. is in our minds. Yeah, in our mind. That's in where mind. it is, in our in mind. mind. And to keep our vision and dreams from becoming a reality, yes. that's what he wants to do. Amen. Keep our visions and our dreams from becoming a reality. Mighty but God. I say again, we were born to reign. Yes. We were born to bring forth fruit yes. and have that fruit remain. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that says that People will know that we were his God's disciples when we have fruit, and that fruit remains. My God. But we're going to need to do what Sister Josie did in order for this to happen. We must trust God mm -hmm. and let go. Let, let go. Let me repeat that. We let must go. trust God and let go. Hallelujah. 
Now, letting go is not easy for most of us because we have been fiercely taught to do just the opposite. That's so true. Haven't we? Yes, we have. We have been taught by the world around us to hold on. Yes. Don't let go. Yes. Hang in there. You see. Don't give up. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The Bible has even told us to hold fast. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Occupy until I come. Amen. And to persevere. Yes. So what are we supposed to do? Huh? Amen. Let me tell you, I have lived for many decades. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and I have found from my personal experiences as well as from counseling others, this is what I have found. If we are not led by the Holy Spirit, mm. we can become very confused. Absolutely. We will find ourselves letting go when God wants us to hold on. Isn't that amazing? And holding on when he wants Just us to let, let go. go. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Confusion mm -hmm. is not of God. It's not of God. Now, Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, if you look at that, and I hope you have your Bibles. Amen. Although the names of Moses' parents are not mentioned here, they are mentioned in Numbers 26 and 9. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we don't even know the name given to Moses. He was just referred to as the babe mm -hmm. by his natural parents. Mm -hmm. Later, we see that he was named Moses by Pharaoh's daughter. Yes, ma'am. Moses' name means drawn out <laughs> because he was yeah. drawn out of the water. Now, Minister, if mm -hmm. I may just interject. Yes. Clearly, that lets us know that names mean oh, yes. something. And I'm going to give an example of that now, shortly. Thank you. And guess what? We have been drawn out, too. Yes, we have. We've been drawn out of the world. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you even feel as though you've been in water over your head, <laughs> hot water. <laughs> that ain't funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. Especially if we've ever been there. Yeah. Been there? Been there Done now. That. As I read verse 2, I'm reminded of the sovereignty of God. Yes. God is the one who determines our gender Amen. while we're yet in our mother's womb. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Whether daddy wanted Holy a girl Ghost. or a boy, Holy. boy, God has already made up, made that decision. Holy Ghost. He's made Amen. it. Amen. He put a male seed in <laughs> Sister Josie's womb. In spite of the fact that Pharaoh had put a contract out on all male children. Mm. Think about that. Mm. God knew this. My Lord. And he could just as easily mm -hmm. have put a female seed in Sister Josie's womb, right? Yeah, that's right. A little mosette. Yes, well. <laughs> may have allowed Sister Josie to keep her child. Mm, yes. But, but God is God, and he had another plan. That's right. A sovereign plan mm -hmm. for Moses' life. Hallelujah. His plan was for Moses to be a deliverer of his people Amen. out of the land of Egypt. Now let us digest here for a moment because mm -hmm. I thought about this. All right. What would you think? Have you ever wondered why God chose a Moses instead of a Moses? Mm. Good question. To lead the people out of Egypt? Good question. That's a good question. What did you conclude? Did he favor men over women? Well, no. 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 However, I do think that the children of Israel would not have been as willing to follow a female mm. Amen. Amen. as they would a male. Good point. Good mm -hmm. point. Especially in that Those season. days. Yes. Even as you read the genealogies through mm -hmm. scripture, they always refer to the son of so-and-so and, -so yes. and the son of so-and-so. -and, -so. and those days, women were looked upon as second-class citizens. Amen. That is true. So God knew what he was doing, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that God can and doesn't use women as leaders. That's so Amen. Amen. You're a leader, elder, Amen. you're a leader in your church, Amen. and I've been leading for the last hundred years. <laughs> in Holy fact, he used Deborah in the book of Judges <laughs> to lead his people, and he is yet using women today. To this very day. It's Amen. really too bad that the hearts of some men are so cold, and they are so disobedient to the heavenly vision that we had to have an Equal Rights Act, an amendment, when mm -hmm. God created all men equally yeah, well. in the beginning. Jesus. There's probably a woman listening to me right now that may be called to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. But before you can answer that call, you're going to need to put away some things. Amen. 
<laughs> let go of some things. Yes, ma'am. Some man-made doctrines right. about female pastors. Mm. And press past some of your own indoctrination, mm. intimidation, mm. and inferiority. Jesus. God said in his word that in the last days, what did he say he would do? Pour, Pour out his spirit, spirit upon Amen. all flesh. That's Joel 2, 28. Having said that, let us continue looking at verse 2, chapter 2. Amen. It says she hid him there for three months. She mm. was able to hide baby Moses. Isn't that incredible? For three months. Well, That's a miracle. Uh, you know that, and I'm going to talk about that. Yes. There is a time to hold on and a time to let go. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Lately, that's been coming to me more Jesus. and more. A Jesus. time to let go and a yes. time to hold on, time yes. to let go. Yes, ma'am. If you know anything about newborn babies, and mm -hmm. all of us do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not an easy task keeping a wet, hungry newborn <laughs> quiet. That is so true. But God protected him by silencing, silencing keeping him quiet. So the enemy would not be able to hear him for three whole months. That's amazing. That Isn't is that a miracle. miracle. That's that a miracle. That is a miracle, really. And then Exodus uh, chapter 2, verse 3, mm -hmm. if you're looking at that verse, it says there comes a time when no matter how much we love our children, mm -hmm. we can no longer protect them Amen. and shelter them. Amen. We must let them go. Got to let them go. However, if we're women of wisdom, and mm -hmm. we like to think we are, Amen. we will have already prepared and laid a godly foundation for our children just as Joshebed did for her son. That's what key. did she do? She prepared an ark of safety for her child. Amen. She Amen. prepared an ark of Amen. safety Amen. for baby Moses. And then Exodus 2 and 4, it tells us that God's people are everywhere mm -hmm. and he has someone watching over your child right now. Right now. Ha! Huh. Maybe your child has left home for college or run away from home, mm. been evicted from home, oh my. <laughs> in jail, <laughs> wherever he or she is, God mm -hmm. has someone watching over him Hallelujah. or her. Have you dispatched your angel to encamp round about your child? Jesus. Can Jesus. we ask you again? Amen. Have you assigned your angel a task of encamping? themselves Amen. around about your child. Absolutely. You know, one day I'll tell you my testimony about when I got saved, about goodness and mercy. Angels were at my head and my foot when Praise I God. fell out under the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So for the last 40 years almost, mm -hmm. I believe I have angels in campus round oh, about me. Absolutely. That's the word. And God. then if you look at Exodus uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 5, it says, Pharaoh's, don't you know that Pharaoh's daughter was a king's kid? Now, yes, she was down there at mm -hmm. that Nile River. Mm -hmm. She didn't need to bathe in the river. Mm -mm. She probably had a jacuzzi in her master bathroom. Right, in her master But bathroom. God had her down there at that Nile River mm -hmm. because her footsteps were ordered by the Lord. Oh my God. And then in Exodus uh, chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, I want you all after this to go back and read this whole passage Amen. of Scripture. Amen. Now, the child Miriam, that was Moses' sister, she was a quick thinker. Yes, she was. She did not panic. Crazy. And God. some of us would have said, oh, God, no, the enemy. Yes. The very person mm -hmm. from whom we're trying to save our child, mm -hmm. he had floated right mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. arms of the enemy. Times, oh, right. my God. How do you suppose Sister Josie felt watching this happen? Mm. That's why we must be. walk by faith That's and not right. by sight. That's the right. very enemy, the Amen. very streets you're trying to save yourself from could be Amen. the very streets God uses Amen. to bring your child out with that Amen. knowledge, that street knowledge, Amen. and bring him into the kingdom of God with Amen. that street Amen. knowledge. Amen. I believe that because Sister Josie put him in the ark of safety, and because his sister Miriam didn't panic, mm -hmm. God rewarded them for their faith. Mm -hmm. And Sister Josie got her son back. Amen. Praise God. Not only that, but she was paid. <laughs> it was so amazing <laughs> by the, how enemy. the Lord did she that. She was paid to care for the child. That Imagine so that. Amazing. Have you put your child in the mm -hmm. ark of safety? Oh my, God. Oh my God. When Sister Josie got her child back, I believe she not only nursed him with mother's milk, mm -hmm. but she also gave him father's milk. Amen. The, the Bible says that sincere milk of the, the word, word of Amen. God. 
So Amen. she didn't just give him breast milk. She gave him the word. Amen. Father's she gave milk. Gave him a foundation. Gave him that foundation. Mm -hmm. And then Amen. Exodus 2 and 10, uh, it talks about uh, this. It said, isn't it interesting mm -hmm. that even Moses was still a three-month-old baby, mm -hmm. and he still cried when he was hungry and wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though he was still a Hebrew child, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even though Pharaoh still had a contract out to kill all the Hebrew mm -hmm. baby That's boys, right. That's right. he was not killed. He was not killed. Not killed. So be encouraged, amazing. mothers, if your sons are out there, be encouraged. Jesus. Why? Because God had a plan for Moses' life. That's right. Hallelujah. Moses was under God's divine protection mm -hmm. because he had a divine appointment. That's right. He had to deliver his people from bondage. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to those of you listening, stop fretting about your children. It may not look like it, but God has a plan for their lives too. Amen. Yes, it's true. They may be rebellious and wayward. But prodigal sons and daughters are coming home every day. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Availeth much. Amen. Mothers, our prayers can and do, do change things. I'm on a Amen. Wednesday morning 6 a.m. prayer call for the last three years with um, uh, several of my girlfriends. And all we do is pray for our children. Hallelujah. And boy, can I tell you testimonies. Woo! Maybe one day Bless I'll have someone come on Bless and share Lord. some of the testimonies. Amen. That's Amen. all we pray. Sometimes we be tempted to pray for ourselves, Amen. but then we're reminded Hallelujah. this is prayers for our children. Yes. And yes. we must pray for our children. We must. The Bible goes on and says, and he grew. Mm -hmm. Moses grew. Yes. And his mother had to release him again. She did. She did this because she was an honorable woman. Hallelujah. A woman and of she faith. had made an agreement to the nurse to raise up the child and give him back to Pharaoh's daughter. Praise God. Isn't that something? Amen. She had to give her son up more than once. More than once. Mothers, Praise our God. children are only ours for a season. That's true. They really belong to God. Amen. And we must dedicate them back to the Lord. Amen. I see Moses being placed in the ark of safety mm -hmm. and the war and in the water by his mother. I see it as a dedication ceremony. All right. All right. Amen. In this sense, it was Moses' baptism. Mm -hmm. right. Have you dedicated your child back to the Lord? Uh, because Sister God. Josie released her child, the scriptures Hallelujah. were able to say that Moses become the, became the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. And she gave him the name Moses. Mm -hmm. Many times when God calls us into his service, he does change our name. That's true. For many years, I used to use my middle name all the time, Darlene, and I like Darlene. <laughs> oh, boy. I really like it. It has some class to it. Mm, my name is Mary Darlene. But in 1982, uh, when I got married to the late Reverend Edwards, God instructed me to start using my first name, Mary. Oh, did he? Okay. And uh, I'm going to tell you another time uh, of that story. Uh, I did not want to do it. But I obeyed God, Amen. and I started using the name Mary. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to save that story for another time. Oh, but Exodus God. 2 and 11, we don't know how much time lapsed between verses 1 and verse 11. Amen. But all things do come to pass. All right. And Moses grew from childhood to adulthood. All right. Amen. All the while, God was still protecting him mm -hmm. in Pharaoh's household. All right. Praise Some God. things never change. Moses was a white Hebrew, mm -hmm. living among black Egyptians, and growing up as Pharaoh's grandson. My Lord. You don't do that without God's divine protection. That is so very true, isn't it? <laughs> that was, a, sure miracle, that was a miracle, as you said. miracle, amen. Exodus 2 and 12 tells us that uh, some things never change, and sin is one of those things. Mm -hmm. Moses sinned. Yes, he did. He tried to hide it. Mm -hmm. It was discovered. He killed an Egyptian. Yes, he did. Fear set in, and he ran. Mm -hmm. And sin mm -hmm. is a vicious cycle. Yes, it but is. this can happen when we get ahead of God. Mm -hmm. Moses was acting out his call prematurely. Mm -hmm. God so he went and got business cards before. Yeah, he went and got, got, got the word. Card. He went and got his business oh, card. He went and got his business card before <laughs> he had the assignment. Oh, my. <laughs> God does not condone murder, but we see later that what Satan meant for evil, God meant it for his purpose. Amen. Now, here's the practical application for all that I shared with you, and I do hope that you will go back and take the time. Let this be your devotion tomorrow night 
or before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What's going on in your life? What is Satan trying to still kill and destroy in your life? Almighty oh, God. Maybe you don't have a child as Sister Josie did, but, but perhaps the seed in, in, is, your, is in your spiritual womb. Mm -hmm. All right. And Satan is trying to still kill or destroy your visions and dreams. Oh, my Lord. Jesus. That are in your spiritual womb. Wow. It's time to put your visions and dreams in the ark of safety. Hallelujah. That basket I told you to get in the beginning Hallelujah. of the meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have a call in your life to the ministry, but things seem to be at a standstill? It's time to put your ministry in the ark of safety. Hallelujah. Someone here wants their loved ones saved, mm -hmm. but you're holding on so tight mm -hmm. that God cannot move on your behalf. Help it's time Lord. to put those loved ones in the ark of safety. Help us, Lord. Do you have a God-given vision maybe to start a church? Mm, but you can't even get folks to come to your home for a Bible study. Mighty God. It's time to put that vision in the ark of safety. Amen. Amen. Told you this, not, this message is not just for widows. That's true. And it's not just for women. Amen. Are you physically sick and you can't, just can't seem to get well? My it's Lord. time to put that need in the ark of safety. Do you have a desire to get married and have a family, but you can't get a single date? It's time to put that desire in the ark of safety. Hallelujah. Do you desire a promotion on your job, mm. but after five years, you're still in an entry-level position? Hallelujah. It's time to put that desire in the ark of safety. Amen. Are you struggling to make ends meet financially? Jesus. And it's a toss-up between paying the past due light bill or the past due gas bill. Jesus. Perhaps you're holding on too tightly to God's tithe. Oh, bless the Lord. And yeah, we're going to talk about that one day. So. Hallelujah. Do you realize that every dime that you steal from God, you allow the devil to steal 90 cents from you? Ooh, oh, my God. 90%. It's time to release God's 10%. Help us, Jesus. Are you letting past pain rob you of your present and paralyze your future? Jesus. Happiness. God wants us to be happy. Amen. We talked Amen. about that a couple of weeks ago. Yes, we but did. But we had our happiness test. Yes, we did. Did you pass that test? <laughs> it's time to put that pain that you're experiencing in the ark. Oh, Jesus. Today is the day of your deliverance. Hallelujah. I believe that everyone under the sound of my voice right now is holding on too tightly to something that <laughs> God wants us to let go of. What oh, is it? My Lord. To thy own self be true. Hallelujah. Think about it. Pray about it. Hallelujah. Then in your sanctified imagination, mm -hmm. place the basket on the Nile River. Hallelujah. As Sister Josie did. Mm -hmm. And let it float. Amen. No matter what things look like in the natural, just mm -hmm. let it flow. Put all those cares of the world in that Praise basket. God. Put it on that Nile River and mm -hmm. let it flow. Oh, and remember, yeah. we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Now, don't you walk on that water trying to retrieve that basket. <laughs> Amen. You need to put yourself in there, too. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes. <laughs> the relationship between Sister Josie and her son Moses is an example of how to release our loved ones, our careers, our hopes, our dreams, our oh, past, yeah. our presence, and our futures Jesus. into the hands of an Jesus. omnipotent omniscient, omnipresent God. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, he's faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Amen. I hope you got something out of this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's one of my signature messages. And every now and then, I got to go pull it out Amen. and read it again. Praise God. We can certainly understand why. Amen. Because that was truly an encouragement. What can I say to so, you about this well, message? Well, I'm going to tell you, Minister, this was really good because there are times when we find ourselves needing to let something go. And as we pray and seek God, he will identify those things that we're holding on to so tightly that we're not able to receive. Because mm. if your hand is clenched, can't get you can't 
you're not letting anything go, but you also can't receive anything as well. So it's really imperative that we do let those things go that could be hindering us from moving forward in purpose. And that's a wonderful segue. But you know what I was thinking as you were speaking on um, the Pharaoh and, and his evil and wicked ways? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that kind of struck me it was in Exodus one twenty two, where he had commanded that all the male children to be destroyed. And because he was concerned Mm -hmm. that they would become so vast in numbers, amen? But here's what kind of struck me, Minister, Mm -hmm. and that is that we see some very similar things happening today, Mm -hmm. that the enemy is still after our seed. Oh, my. Yes, he is. Mm Hallelujah. How many of our young black men are being confined in prisons, Mm -hmm. being murdered? This is a capital situation. Mm. This is a 911 situation for those that are are able to hear and understand those that have a heart after God. He said that we would know he would reveal those things to us. He would Mm -hmm. show us things Mm -hmm. to come by the spirit. Amen. Yes. And so we need to understand that God has given us insight Mm -hmm. into these matters, but it is upon us to pray and to believe God and trust him and cover our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. And not just our little ones either. We have to cover all Mm -hmm. of our children, whether they're little, whether they're youth, or whether they're adults. We have to cover them because as young children and as young people out in the in the city streets and so forth there's a lot of dangers i just believe the blood of jesus will cover and protect yes and so it is upon us minister that we as mothers would just extend those prayers far and beyond but not only Mm -hmm. for our own children Mm -hmm. I'm just reminded of a woman whom I think is one of the premier intercessors in the Word of God. Her name was Rizba, and she was one that uh, she was a concubine of Saul. Now, when Saul was when Saul was murdered, and when he was killed, rather, it it was such that in those days. If you were living in a place and you no longer had your covering, if you will, mm-hmm. then you were released. You had mm-hmm. to leave. She had to leave the the palace grounds. And not only that, because of something that had happened, and we don't have time to get into all the details, but we just want to point to the fact that her sons were murdered as a result of some things that had mm-hmm. happened along the way. Mm-hmm. And as a result... She found out that they had been hung with hung out in the elements. Mm-hmm. Not only her sons, but some other sons as well. Mm. And they hung out in the elements. And she actually went to the rock. And she laid on that rock so that she could intercede on behalf of her children, her sons, because she was there to keep the prey from destroying their yes. bodies. Vultures, and yeah. absolutely, all the vultures and the, the prey, all of those that might would come to destroy their flesh. And so she stayed there for weeks, protecting her children. And once again, not only her children, but others' children as yes, well. Yes, so yes. we have to understand and know that that was intercession. She was standing in mm-hmm, the gap. Mm-hmm. And so... That gives us an example about how important it is for us to not only stand for our children, but stand for others as well, that we may be able to see a turnaround. For Father is able to turn this situation around as we invite him into it. Amen. That Amen. he can move miraculously and supernaturally in the midst. We love our sons and yes, daughters. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we want the best for them, as well as those of our neighbor. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. That was such a wonderful message. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. I know um, you got some good stuff. I just want to interject this right quick, yes, and then I want yeah. you to take it yes, from there, yeah. and then Hallelujah. you're going to close us out in prayer. You know, as my children were growing up, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and I mean, this, I've had this message for decades. Mm-hmm. I was, this was given to me 30 years ago. Amen. Okay? Amen. 
and it's still relevant today because mm -hmm. it has the word of the Lord. But this, I had this one problem, son. If mm -hmm. I told him to go in, he'd come out. If I told him to stand up, he'd sit down. I tell him to <laughs> shut up, he'd keep talking, okay? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And so I, it got to be a real issue. I mm -hmm. mean, really, I mean, just a real issue. And so mm -hmm. finally I said, Lord, I just don't know what to say out to him. I don't know what to um, do. I don't know what mm -hmm. to say. And God in his wisdom gave me this, Elder. He said, I want you to look in the mirror, mm -hmm. and I want you to get the right expression on your face. All right. And I want you to say these words to your son. Okay. No, don't add nothing. Don't take <laughs> nothing away. All right. Just have that right look on your face. And mm -hmm. he showed me what right look. And I looked, and this is what I said to my son. Mm -hmm. And I've shared this, and it works even today. Because mm -hmm. I shared it with my girlfriends who had problems with their... I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I love you, mm -hmm. but I can't let you kill me. Mm. Amen. I love you, Amen. but I can't let you kill me. Amen. God Thanks said, God. leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Don't say no more. I want to say some more, but uh, Lord said, don't I say no more. Tempting, wasn't and it? don't say no less. And that, it's that look Amen. that they know that certain look. They know mama mean this. Yes, they do. And so years went by. And one day I had some company over to a, a friend, a girlfriend at the house, uh, Elder Anna, mm -hmm. and she was complaining about her son, and my mm -hmm. son happened to be there visiting. Oh, and wow. he walked by, and he <laughs> said something that let me know that even when they act like they're not paying attention, he mm -hmm. said, oh, you ought to tell them what my mother told me. Mm. I love you, but I can't let you kill me. Oh, my God. And the Lord let me know, even when they act like they're not listening, they listen. They're listening. Absolutely. So you take it from here, my and dear. they know when you're really serious. Oh yeah, too. that look. It's There's a look, a look. There and is a, a tone. Look. Absolutely. And I practiced it before I said it. Said Amen. Because I didn't want to look evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't want to say it, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, know I am. Mm -hmm. He said, "Don't mm -hmm. say no more. Don't say no Amen. less." Amen. And that's all. Those few words were Praise anointed God. by God. God. And my son got and he'll tell you to this day, he didn't mm. use that more than once. <laughs> <laughs> he used it probably with his kids. Because <laughs> I you got grandkids. If it works now, right. If it worked for me, if it, it worked work for you. That's a generational thing. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, Elder Anna, take, share, share a few God. of your wonderful Praise notes God. with us. Praise God. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, as the clock is ticking on the wall, we're just so grateful for this time to share. Um, I had some things I wanted to share with, uh, uh, with us, and um, one of them was just several principles, powerful principles on how to endure the grief that you might be feeling mm -hmm. as you are letting go. Mm -hmm. Because there's some principles, there's some, some ways that God would use, things that he would use to help us mm -hmm. to further that process. Yes. Amen. And so as we were talking about it, these seem like some things that might be helpful. Yeah, help us. Hallelujah. One thing that after the extreme loss of someone that you love, you're going to, there's going to be a pain that's there. And you have to acknowledge that. You have to give that to the Lord, allow him to bring forth the comfort. Hallelujah. Because he will do that. He will do that for you, especially when you're experiencing some suffering or whatever that might be for you. There's things that God will give you. And I'm not going to go through everything. Perhaps we can revisit this no, next yes, time. We, uh, can. we can get into mm -hmm. it a little bit more detail because sure. there's some wonderful principles it is. here. Let um, it go. And so um, now we need to understand the trials will indeed come. But God will give us the grace and the power to overcome whatever. Ever the circumstances, because he has a purpose and a plan for yes, our lives. Yes, he does. No matter what we might be going through, we understand and know that all things, even when we lost someone, mm -hmm. even when we might be having some struggles with finances or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. there is still a plan. Yes. There is still a purpose. There is still a mission that God has given us. And we need to just continue to believe and trust him that he He's ushering us into that place. So that's why we want to come. That's why we come on to encourage the yes. men and women of God that are that may be grieving, that may have been mourning. And perhaps this is something that you're continuing to deal with. Well, we want to encourage you that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. There is a point at which you begin to take those morning clothes off and you begin to put on that robe of righteousness, that robe of the praise, praise. hallelujah, garment. that garment will come forth. You will begin to see the sunshine again, hallelujah. hallelujah. You will begin to see the, the light of God's 
spirit just begin to raise you up. You will begin to see those times, but it is entirely up to us when mm -hmm. we allow mm -hmm. him to do that work mm -hmm. of his grace. Mm -hmm. Just remember that our Lord is our rock. Yes. He's our fortress. He's our deliverer. Hallelujah. He's our strength. Glory to God. He's the strong tower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In yes. him we trust. Hallelujah. He's our shield and our buckler. Hallelujah. And we can run in and find safety in him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So there's going to be things that come. There are going to be things that come. Even after after you've gotten past, past the place where you're, where you're beginning to see the light of day again, after everything that has happened, there's still going to be other yes, situations will. that will come. Mm -hmm. That's so true. this is a time where you want to begin to just build your faith. Hallelujah. The word of God will help you. Find those scriptures that will begin to give you the, the encouragement that you need in order to move forward. I know that there are times when you may not even feel like getting up or going out or even getting dressed someday. It's Hallelujah. True. And that's just the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. But the whole of it is, is as you just begin to soak in the word, begin to soak and be washed by the water, by the word of God that there you will begin to find that peace. You will find that hope. You will find that Hallelujah. deliverance. Thank you will Jesus. find that Hallelujah. encouragement. You will find everything Hallelujah. that you Thank stand you, in need of. It is in Christ. Yes. Christ in us, the hope, hope of Lord. glory. And so as you begin to get in the word of God, you will find that there, everything you can imagine that could possibly have ever happened mm -hmm. that you could see on television or in the movies or anywhere Amen. else, it's in the word of God. God. Amen. But not only is the situation, but also the 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 the, so, the solution, I should say. Yes, yes, yes. Not only the problem, mm -hmm. but the solution. The solution. God will give you the solution to how to mm -hmm. come out of that thing, how to come out of that mm -hmm. thing victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. And so, you know, I know we're going to have an opportunity to go through some of these. Oh, yes. Next powerful. week, I want to pick it up. Now, you know, um, Elder Anna, October is Breast Cancer Survivor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. And um, we probably need to focus on some of and that, We're going to do some of that, yes. Uh, but letting go is always a wonderful topic. Yes, and I hand me that uh, uh, um, thing right there, <laughs> thing Amen. right, this yes. flyer. For those of you that I haven't met, I'd love to uh, have opportunity to, to meet you this Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon at 4 o'clock. I'm going to be ministering at Albethel Temple Church at 13922 Schaefer Highway. Again, oh, 13922 Schaefer Highway, that's near Grand River in the city of Detroit. Praise Pastors Henry and Cassandria Sims. And I like to say that I actually prayed this pastor mm -hmm. into the kingdom of God wow. over Amen. about 35 years ago. Oh, and so Lord. I'm going to be uh, speaking this um, uh Sunday, and I would love for you to come out. Hallelujah. I'm going to be talking about how I was an unsaved evangelist and didn't know it. <laughs> how I got saved. It's, a, it's funny. To God. It's going to be some humor, Glory but it's God. also going to be some serious moments. Hallelujah. So come on out. Praise and uh, Elder Anna, I want you to um, dismiss us in prayer. Maybe we can Amen. have just a few bars Amen. of our Amen. song Amen. that we heard when we came on, you think? Glory to okay. God. Glory to God. Well, you know what? We are so delighted by what God is doing in our midst. I don't know about you, but I feel encouraged. Oh, I was. I feel to go home and let some things go. Okay. Amen. On the way home. All the way home. Right glory now. To let it God. go. Glory now in the, whoa, in the glory name of Jesus. Be go. free. Because whom the Son says free is free, free indeed. indeed. Thank and you. we know when the word goes forth, that word has power. Yes. That word has power. Power to deliver us yes. from our circumstances. Hallelujah. So we just thank and praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That you've touched someone's heart on tonight and you're just showing them that areas where they need to release those things unto you, where they need to cast those cares unto thee, O oh God, because you care for us, Father. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and we praise
praise you, oh God, as we come before you with our whole heart. We thank you, Lord God, that you're doing a supernatural work of your grace. Yes. We thank and praise thee, oh God, for an anointing that is empowering each and every one of us to begin to look deeply within our hearts, oh God, and see those areas where there's things that are still lingering that would hinder us from moving forth in purpose and in the mission that you've given unto us, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you, oh God, that you're opening our eyes that we may be able to see that which you desire for us to release unto you. We cast it all unto the altar right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And bless your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. And we just need to worship our God. We just need to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God, for you're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. And we exalt and magnify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And bless the Lord. Praise your holy name, oh God. Hallelujah. God bless you all and have a a impactful weekend. weekend.